Hi, welcome back to the channel. Here we are again, another video about hair loss and hair restoration surgery. We appreciate you being here with us. We've had the channel for a while right now, so uh, hopefully you're getting some good content from us. We try to educate you and uh, on the real deal on hair transplantation and hair loss, the real science of it, and what we know so far. So hopefully this has been helpful. As usual, please uh, click the like button so we can put this in front of more people. Subscribe to the channel, it always helps us, okay? Today's video, we're gonna talk about using other types of donor hair for a hair transplant procedure. Traditionally, we use the scalp, but today we're gonna to talk about other areas that can be used in certain situations. So, stay tuned, let's do it. Hi there. So, what happens if you or anybody you know doesn't have enough hair on the back of their head for a hair transplant procedure? We have other options sometimes and that's what we're going to talk about today. Traditionally, hair loss uh, or hair transplant surgery rather relies on the supply of what we call donor hairs. Those are permanent hairs that are not uh, susceptible to the action of the dihydrotestosterone hormone. If you don't understand this process, I'm not going to go explain it again here. There are videos on the channel that explain that, so check it out so you can understand what I'm talking about. But um, the fact of the matter is these hairs on the sides or temporal areas and on the back areas, the occipital area of the scalp, they are immune to dihydrotestosterone. And so we use them as donor supply for our transplants. So basically we use some of the hairs from here and we transplant them into the top so they can keep on growing to cover the thin areas. Sometimes we see patients that don't have enough or have had already multiple hair transplants and uh, the supply here has been depleted. So what do we do then? Are they out of, uh, out of luck? Well, we can use other areas. And so these are called body hair um, transplantations or body hair as a source of donor zone. So which areas do I like to use? This is my opinion, okay? Every surgeon may think a little bit different. So. If you have to consider that, of course, I'll talk to you more about that and I'll explain, you know, here why I only go for certain areas. My favorite area is the chest area and also abdomen. Those are great areas if you have enough hair there because uh, the hairs are nice. Sometimes we can get some two hair follicles. Majority of them are going to be singles. The problem with that is that the hair usually doesn't grow very long. If you look at your chest and even if you're very hairy, the hair is only about maybe an inch or two long, so you know, it's going to have some limitations there, but it's a good source of donor zone. Of course, we use FUE, not strip procedure for those, so it doesn't leave any visible scarring. And uh, you know, if you have enough hair, that can be a, supply, a good supply for a few thousand grafts that we can use to fill in areas. Other air so this diagram just show you, you know, we can use a chest, even the uh, abdominal hair here is also very good for transplants. Another great area, if you have enough, is the beard. So we can use beard hair to actually transplant into the scalp. And of course, if you have a little spot in your beard, we can use your beard hair to fill in those areas. I no normally like to use the area under the chin, or we call submental area, like this area right here. It's really nice because it doesn't scar, even if you have little tiny white dots afterwards, it's not gonna show because you have the shadow there. We, all, we obviously don't remove all the hairs, we leave some hair behind, so you know, you, you can uh, hide it pretty well. Uh, and does, we try not to leave any gaps here. Sometimes patients ask me, they have hair all the way into the neck here, and they ask me if I can remove those. I normally don't, because those areas, the skin is different, it can actually scar, and if you shave there, it's gonna show. I also don't remove from the cheeks or the goatee, because again, it can scar and it's gonna show. So, but yeah, but here, you can remove quite a few hairs. The nice thing about the beard hair is that it's usually a, a little coarser hair and it tends to grow long. You know, if you have a beard, you know, that if you don't shave for a while, it'll keep on growing long. And so when you transfer into the scalp, the hair will also grow long. So it can allow you more flexibility on styling. But, uh, so between the chest and the beard and the abdomen, those are my three favorite areas if I have to go into the body. There are some uh, specific indications for these procedures. And mainly, to me at least, is like when you don't have any more donor hair on your scalp. I always favor the scalp hair if I can. It's a great match to the rest of the scalp, obviously same hair, 
Uh, we can do a lot with the hair and the scalp now, even over multiple surgeries, if we approach it carefully and we don't over harvest and we don't, do, don't go too aggressive, you should have enough hair to create a very natural result. In the consultation, of course, I will tell you based on what you have, what I can do safely and realistically. So we'll talk a lot about that. A lot of what I do in the consultation is, of course, making sure you're a great candidate for this if we're thinking about a transplant, but also just as important is to set your expectations, right? What can I do with the hair that you have? Not everybody has the same hair. Everybody has different hair, different hair loss, different possibility of hair loss in the future. So we'll address all that in the consultation. That's very important. But if you've had a few surgeries, a few transplants in the past, or if you had a couple of big ones and there's not enough donor anymore here, and you have a couple of areas that want that you want to fill, uh, hair from the body can be a good option. So we can talk about that too. Okay, surgery is very safe. It's uh, there's a, a requirement for a different anesthetic technique, which I kind of created over the years. So it's very comfortable, and uh, you know the procedure is uh, easily done. Okay, the recovery is pretty easy too. The technique, like I said, we use FUE. We're not gonna take a big strip from your chest or a big strip from here and leave you with uh, scars there. So it's FUE technique that we use. And uh, again, it heals very well. We use very small diameter punches, so no scarring visible. And as long as we stay in the safe zones, like I said, under the chin here for the beard or in the chest and the abdomen, uh, you should heal very well. So the limitations is, again, on the chest hair particularly, there's only so much hair, right? Uh, even if you have a lot of hair, chest hair, the density of hair, meaning how many hairs you have per area, surface area of the scalp, is a lot lower or a lot, a lot less than the scalp density. But usually, if you go for like areas that are not very big, you can harvest enough hair that way. The other limitation is you get a lot of singles, particularly when you go into the chest, although you can get some doubles. I have ever seen some triple hair in the chest. The beard, you can get more double hair grafts in the beard too, but normally you're gonna have a higher percentage of single hair grafts into the body area, or from the body areas. And this is just a picture of a patient here. He's actually a, a physician friend of mine who uh, had had plenty of transplants in the past, so his donor zone was pretty much exhausted. It doesn't look like here, because he looks like he has a lot of hair in the back, but yeah. But if I keep taking more, then he's gonna look very thin back there. So we decided not to. And this is after a couple of surgeries with chest hair. We didn't use any beard here. One thing that's interesting about the chest hair is that, yeah, like I said before, the hair only grows maybe an inch or two, but over time, we noticed that once we put it into the scalp, it starts to get longer and longer. You know, the location of it, for some reason, changes the hair growth cycle phases. So the growth phase starts to get longer and longer. And so sometimes the patients can get long hair. Uh, I don't like to transplant chest hair into the edge of the hairline for this reason. You don't want to have just a bunch of, bunch of little short hairs here in front of what you, of the other transplants. But it can be a good hair and you can see here it can get you nice coverage and nice density uh, but I wouldn't rely just on the chest okay so this is a very quick uh, summary of the body hair I have questions about that all the time from patients so now you know more about it and if you want me to evaluate your situation to see if you're a candidate for this or if we even need to go to the body hair let me know we can offer a free consultation for you and I'll be happy to help you out okay so I'll leave you with this I'll see you next time take care